Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. As you guys see, we got some kind of new upgrades to the channel. We got a new camera. I can finally see you guys way better. Also changing the thumbnails up a lot. I hopped into Photoshop, kind of did some work there. But anyways, as basic news, as you guys see by the title, we're going to be talking about Herb Smith Jr., our third year tight end out of Alabama University. And we can, I, we can all kind of agree we have this underlying huge expectations for Herb Smith, especially last year and really going into this year. And I think he has serious potential to be a very, very good, good potentially great tight end in this upcoming year and there's just some facts and just some storylines that we kind of need to follow and that i'm going to be discussing in this video today irv smith he's got all the intang intangibles he's got the talent it just really depends if he can put it all together and if the minnesota vikings are going to use him in the right way anyways if you guys are new here subscribe to the channel we do daily minnesota vikings videos and then also we are going to be starting to get into a little more nfl content top 10 receivers top 10 quarterbacks kind of who i think is going to win each each division tons of new content coming our way but when it does hit august we are vikings fully two to three videos a day kind of taking it full time in august and we are going to be pretty much getting you guys every single bit of information you guys need on vikings training camp preseason and heading into week one in cincinnati but if you guys are new here again subscribe like a video comment down below respond to all you guys let's talk about irv smith jr right now Okay, so Irv Smith Jr., our six foot two, two hundred forty pound tight end. Again, this is his third season coming from Alabama. He has shown slight progression from year one to year two. In year one, he all he actually ended up playing all sixteen games. He only ended up starting seven of them, mainly because we had Kyle Rudolph here for majority of the year. And then same thing in twenty twenty, he only played thirteen games, but he ended up starting seven of them. But here's where the progression is. When it comes to targets in 2019-2020, about the same. He actually ended up having more targets in his rookie year than he did last year. But that's just mainly because he played more. He played three more games. And, of course, targets going to rack up. He had four more targets. It was 47 in 2019 to 43 in 2020. And then if you look at receptions, of course, they're going to be a little more in 2019 compared to 2020. It was 36 to 30. But this is where the kind of progression I have saw with Irv Smith, especially last season. When it comes to yards, 2019 in yards, he had 311. And he had that on 36 catches. But in 2020, he had 30 catches on 365 yards. So you can already see his yards per catch is already up. In 2019, the yards per catch was around 8.6. And now in 2020, it's 12.2. When you see that kind of jump from a tight end, and especially the tight end position in the NFL, you're learning, besides quarterback, I think this might be the toughest position to go from college straight to the pros because you got to learn blocking scheme. You got to learn an entire new route tree. You got to know combinations on routes because tight ends, there's a lot of option routes in the NFL where you and the quarterback need to get on the same page and you might bust out if you're running an out route because you have good leverage or you could bust inside. It's really, and Vikings do, well, do that a lot with the option routes with the tight ends, but just to see that his yards per reception jumped uh, around 3.6 yards I think that's a huge sign. And since he was kind of banged up a little bit yet last year, I think it just kind of all goes into the right pro in the right direction. It shows progression. Then these two final stats, I love the progression. These are my two favorites. When it comes to touchdowns, he had two in his rookie year, and then he had five last year. A tight end, especially when we have quarterback Kirk Cousins, you're going to be a touchdown guy. You are going to have a lot of touchdowns, and I'll get into who I think Irv Smith's comparison is going to be later on in this video. But you jump from two to five touchdowns, and then also yards per game, he only had 19.4 in his rookie season, up to 28.1. Listen, I know 28.1 yards per game is not anything to write home about, but the jump from 19.4 to 28.1, that's pretty significant. And plus, you kind of throw on the fact that he is the tight end two technically the past few years i know er, uh, rudy missed a couple games here and there but there has been especially last year there was a couple games that kind of stood out to me you had week five at seattle this was a huge game for the vikings i think they came in i believe one and three i don't know yeah so it was week five so they're one and three coming off a win at houston and seattle i'm if I'm not mistaken, they were undefeated at the time. They might have had one loss, but I think they were either 3-0 and or 3-1. and And this was a big game in Seattle. It was raining. It was a kind of just a mucky game. And Irv Smith, honestly, 
I mean, the stat line won't blow you away, but the kind of the catches he was making in this game really showed me that he has it. He has that star potential that you look for in a tight end. He had four receptions for 64 yards. He was making diving catches in the reins, and he really, really developed in that game. And that's when I kind of started to realize, I was like, okay, all the hype around him, it's real. You know, he is a second round pick from Alabama. Now, where the progression comes this season, obviously no more Kyle Rudolph. Irv Smith, you're the dog, you're the man in the tight end room. But also he got a dietitian. Irv Smith, like I said, he's six foot two, 240. His height, honestly, probably an inch or two below what you want your tight end to be. And he weighs 240 pounds. And so that means he can really, you know, you know, he has a punch to him. He's 6'2", 240, around 250. And he got a dietitian. So all of that is just going to be healthy weight. He's he, he took an effort. Listen, I don't know if they'll immediately get on the field and be an impact. But we can tell that this guy likes to work hard. Okay? Like, it's not that, I mean, not everybody has to go and get a dietitian. But Irv Smith knows he's top dog in the tight end room. He's going to need to do that. He's going to need to do the little things that he wants to to be great. We always hear about the reports, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, LeBron James. They put millions into the body every year. I think Irv Smith is just kind of going down that line. And now also about the production. The Vikings know they have a talent here. I don't think. I don't think that's something where they think, oh, can Irv Smith handle being a tight end one? But also, you look at the wide receiver three, and you look at the tight end behind Irv Smith. Tyler Conklin is an extremely underrated tight end in the NFL. He could really do some damage even at tight end one reps. So if they, for example, wanted to move Irv Smith out to a wide receiver three and then still have a tight end on the field, the Vikings have all honest, like they have all like leverage, they have all flexibility to do that. Because Irv Smith, if he matches up on a corner, if he is a wide receiver three, that is going to be barbecue chicken. He is going to win that route almost every time. And if you could use him as a wide receiver three and hit him up the seams, you already see his yards per catch. It was 12.2 last year. If we could get that up to like 15, 16, 14 around that area by hitting him up the seams, I think it could be something that could really help. And... My kind of last two points is tight ends, they take longer to develop. I know I said this earlier on the video, but listen, you got to learn so much in the NFL. You got to learn, all right, I'm down blocking on this play. Okay, I'm pulling out and I got to get up to the corner on this running play. All right, I got to block the linebacker and then I got to chip off to the safety for this home run run play. And that's just the run blocking part of it. And then you got to throw in, oh, I am a receiver. Okay, so I'm delay blocking here and then I'm fading out here. There's a ton of stuff. You kind of need to get down as a tight end. And I think in your third year, third year in the system, you're more comfortable with the playbook. You have a more of a you have more of a relationship with the quarterback Kirk Cousins. And now I'm gonna get into my comparison. I don't think he's gonna be a Kittle or a Kelsey or a Darren Wallen in his career. If he is, Irv, prove me wrong. I think his comparison is Jordan Reed. Jordan Reed in his first two seasons in the NFL both had under 500 yards he had around 400 so he had about like 100 more yards per season than irv smith they're both around six foot two 240 pounds exactly you actually look up their height and weight they are exactly the same on you can just look it up on google it will show up the exact same six foot two i think it's 242 they also both played with kirk cousins now jordan reed his leap from his second year to his third year he had around 400 yards in his second year. In his third year, he had 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns. And that was with Kirk Cousins. And you look at kind of Irv Smith. First two years was very solid. This third year, 1K yards. I think I think Irv Smith has potential. I don't think he'll hit 1K yards like Jordan Reed in his third year. But if I could slate in for Irv Smith to be a top 5, top 10 fantasy tight end, this Vikings offense has so many weapons that he's not going to be the focal point. And that's almost like, it's not even like a diss at him that he won't be the main guy that defenses are trying to take away. It's a compliment to the rest. Anyways, that's my video on Irv Smith. I think he has a huge chance to kind of be a breakout star for the Vikings. He's my number one guy for the Vikings to break out this season. Let me know what you guys think down below. Skull Vikes.